Being in the fleet business, I'm uh, very aware of the dangers of talking on cell phone or texting. You know, to, to take a call or make a call or to text while driving, accidents can happen so quickly and I want to be there for my family. I'm a new grandmother and I want to see my granddaughter grow up. I'll tell you a story. The other day I was driving down I-70 headed uh, east and as I was driving down the road I was in the middle lane and I watched traffic pass me on the left and out of ten cars that passed me, seven of them, seven of the drivers were on the cell phone. I've also seen over-the-road tractor trailers do it, uh, our fleet drivers do it, uh, KCPNL, and regular everyday people, I've seen them do it. Dangerous practice and it needs to stop and the awareness needs to be made in a wider scale than what it has been made. I was driving home from work one day talking to a friend on the phone and I realized that I had missed my exit by 10 miles. And when I told my friend what had happened, she had actually gotten lost. So that was kind of got me started to see that maybe I wasn't as good as I thought I was at using my cell phone while driving. Uh, but it wasn't until I saw the videos that we included in our presentation that I really realized that it was dangerous and I wasn't going to put my family through what those families had, had gone through. The City of Kansas City has a new program called Play It Safe While Driving. And the reason we have the program is because we've got about 2,000 vehicles out on the streets of the city at any one time, um, every single day. And with that many people out on the streets driving, um, people have the temptation maybe to go ahead and pick up their cell phone and take a call. We're all programmed to use these all the time. We're looking at them constantly. So when you do that, um, scientific research says we just can't drive and operate a cell phone at the same time and do both of those things well. Statistics show that about one in four accidents right now uh, involve the use of a cell phone and that number is going up despite the fact that we have rules and laws against it. Well this is my personal cell phone. I also have another cell phone. This is my city cell phone. I'm like a lot of people that work for the city. I've got two cell phones. I've got people at home that want to talk to me. I've got people at work that want to talk to me. And the great thing about cell phones is we can use them for a thousand things. The bad thing is is that um, a lot of my life is spent looking at little screens that are really attractive and sometimes I need to keep my eyes on the road when I'm driving or, or doing other things. So cell phones are great. We have to figure out a smart way how to interact with this new technology. June was National Safety Month and we wanted to team up with the safety teams from the Aviation and Water Services Department to make a city-wide safety initiative. And we selected distracted driving, specifically using a cell phone while you're driving, to be our focus. And that's where we came up with a program, the Play Safe While Driving campaign. And really, it's just about changing a habit. That's all they need to do is change a habit from reaching for that cell phone to putting it away so that they don't use it while they're driving. Uh, we show groups of people videos from injury accidents that have happened and stories from people that have been involved in uh, injury accidents where there was a cell phone in use. Um, after they watch that, after we have that class, we ask people if they'd like to sign a pledge that would essentially promises that I'm going to do my best not to use my cell phone or text anymore while I'm driving. Um, in addition to signing the pledge, uh, we, have, uh, we provide an opportunity for people to dedicate their pledge to someone, a family member, a friend, uh, and then after that, what we do is we give them we give them a place to put their phone, and that is a little zippered orange bag. It has the logo that says "Play It Safe While Driving" on it. And what we like people to do is, when they get in their car, they can make a call if they want to. But then before they start their drive, they'll go ahead, take their cell phone, put it in the bag, and zip the bag up. And when you zip the bag up, that's your reminder that you're done with that activity. You can set that on the seat. And you know that the phone is put away, I'm not going to use it, I've already made the decision, I've zipped it up in the bag, I'm going to drive safe, I'm going to play it safe while driving. The city has 3,000 vehicles in the fleet and I really believe this program will make a big impact on reducing our accidents and increasing safety. And again, being in the fleet business, I receive statistics, you know, over 30,000 deaths happen every year. Over three million people are injured by uh, automobile accidents 
and a large percentage of that is caused by folks on um, a cell phone or texting. So it didn't take much for me to take the pledge. Um, I can't really be in the position I'm in and, and not take the pledge. Um, I believe in you know uh, leading by example. You know I'm leading by example by not using my cell phone while I'm out on the job. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. The reason why I took the pledge to not text or use my cell phone while I'm driving, in either in my personal car or my city vehicle, um, is because I nearly had an accident. I almost rear-ended a vehicle while driving to work because I happened to look down to see who was calling me, and when I glanced back up, I almost hit this car. And I thought, that is really stupid. You know, what a hypocrite because I'm always complaining about other people driving and bad drivers, but I did the very same thing. And then a week or so after that, I saw the presentation. And I realized, looking at the statistics and the information about how the human brain cannot process all that at once and drive and talk on the phone, um, it made sense to me. Because I thought, you know, I'm, I'm good, but I'm not that good. So I took the pledge, and I have not used my cell phone since. And it's wonderful. As a part of the program, the videos that we have people watch are really emotional videos. They're testimonials from people that were involved in terrible accidents. In particular, there's one with a, a young woman named J.C. Good who on her college graduation night was involved in a wreck that claimed the life of her parents. And the other party involved in that accident was a young person on a cell phone. It changed her life forever. Her parents are gone. Uh, and when we showed that uh, video to the folks in our classes, when we show that video to them, um, we frequently get uh, people that tear up during that, um, during that video presentation. When you're driving down the road, the decisions that you make have impacts for yourself and for others. And if you make a bad decision while driving, it can cost someone their life, you or someone in your vehicle or someone in another vehicle. And when that happens, we can't get that life back. Uh, we have to make good decisions when we operate a motor vehicle and choosing not to use your cell phone or text while driving, that's a really good decision. I think just the, seeing the video with everyday people and, and it being examples of real life situations instead of uh, just instructional, stay off the phone. When you see the testimony of people, it brings it closer to home. I have a lot of feedback from employees who've seen the video saying that that really struck them. They really realized how unimportant a phone call was and that it could wait. We've gotten a lot of feedback from employees saying thank you for making me think and that no one should ever use a cell phone while they're driving again. So that has been really good to hear that people have taken ownership of this, that they're able to stick to their pledge and they feel that they're safer out there and they're making the roads of Kansas City safer too. It's just so easy to get, you know, take that call. You're on the job, you're trying to do a good job. Um, and you kind of forget about the safety aspect of it. So yeah, I think I'm a safer driver because of this program. I really appreciate that the city has allowed employees to take the pledge and that you're giving us the information that we need um, in order to make an informed choice. As the security coordinator, people usually aren't calling me or texting me for good reasons. It usually means there's a problem. But since I took the pledge, I've realized, you know what? I can just pull over. It takes a minute, and I can pull over, and I can safely deal with those kind of issues. And I'm not putting myself or anybody else in jeopardy. To date, we've had more than 725 employees take the pledge not to use their cell phone and drive. And we know that the number of people in our community that are impacted is, is even higher than that, because people take the bags home and talk to their kids and talk to their spouses. Uh, so we know we're having an impact. We're not gonna stop with our program until we've talked with every single city employee. We're looking forward to it. We know that this program saves lives. I wish there were enough words to describe my parents. They were both just the most wonderful people. You know, every week they were at the soup kitchen helping to feed the underprivileged and, and always helping other people. 
but you know, my mom was the cool eighth grade English teacher. Anytime I'm home, my neighbors always say they just don't know what to do, that anytime they needed a lawnmower fixed or a new well dug or their shutters painted, just absolutely everything. My dad was always just could not say no and helped everyone he could help. The date was May 18th of 2008. It was my college graduation day. And, you know, my parents and I were just driving this really easy drive that we'd done so many times, but because of a young driver talking on his cell phone while he was driving, he caused a three vehicle collision that ended the lives of both my parents and ended all hopes of, of the life I had been planning. And there happened to be a paramedic who lived right on the scene. He heard the crash and came to see if everyone was okay. When he got there, my mom didn't even have a heartbeat. My dad had a really faint heartbeat, but it faded almost right away. And when he came to me, I had a really strong pulse, but I wasn't breathing. So he moved my head and I took a gasp for air. We were literally around the corner from an ambulance station and less than 10 minutes from a trauma hospital. My life has changed in every way imaginable, not only with my parents being gone, but you know, just being in this entirely new body. Broken bones heal, but you know, a brain injury is forever. And that, amazingly, I lost not too much cognitive ability. She started off on the brink of death, you know, a 10% chance of surviving. And it was two weeks before she even really started waking up, giving me occasional thumbs up. It was three months before she even really knew who I was. It was about a month and a half after the accident. She, she was the first time she asked where her parents were. Her brother told her and she thought it was a joke. And even so, she didn't remember the next day. And she probably asked about her parents specifically three dozen times over the course of two months before it really stuck in. And for us and for her family, it was heartbreaking every time. The left side of my body doesn't really, this is, what, this is what my arm can do. I can't move my wrist, I can't move my fingers, I can't move my ankle, I can't move my toes. It's just so difficult that I can't really function as a normal human being. That's the things I used to love to do, I can't do anymore. You know, there's, I was an outdoor, outdoors girl. There's no more hiking, there's no more biking, there's no more throwing a baseball around, there's no more canoeing, there's no more camping. Those were my absolute favorite things to do. Kelsey was a beautiful young lady. She was in palms, she liked to dance. She loved hanging out with her twin sister. She always said she didn't have any friends, but we found that not to be true. Um, after she had passed away by over a thousand people at her at her funeral and wake. Uh, even at 17 she would want to hug and snuggle with me and she just had a huge, huge heart. She was a very fun-loving kid. Uh, she was always cracking jokes and laughing at everything I said. She loved to uh, uh, play jokes on, on me as well and I think especially me. Um, she was always leaving uh, or leaving me notes. Uh, Dad, love you. I was here. Um, as a matter of fact, we found one note months after she died in our car, and in the glove box was a note she had written. Said, Dad, I know you're going to clean the car and find this note, and uh, just uh, funny things like that all the time. We would find that she would leave. It was January 24th, 2010, at 3:37 in the afternoon. I had uh, the phone had rang and. It was Kelsey's best friend, Stacy, on the other end. And Stacy said that Kelsey had been in an in a accident. We went down to the crash site and it was bad. Kelsey was in the car. She was T-boned by an SUV and the SUV was only doing 35 miles an hour. I had found out a few days after that Kelsey had been on the phone it's a cliche to say it was surreal, but I think from, from the call on for who knows how long, we were just shocked in a daze, and, and some days I think we still are.
Focus Driven in its simplest terms is essentially the mothers against drunk driving on today's cell infested roads. And you know, we're just doing our best to get legislation passed, to reach out to families who have lost loved ones and help them find a place to mourn the loss of their loved ones. People don't realize that when you're having a conversation on the phone that you are trying to drive at the same time and talk at the same time and your brain can cognitively cannot uh, do both tasks and so the talking on the phone takes over and you are not seeing the, the road. I believe that it's much more than just the law, the education has to be there as well um, to get people to realize how dangerous that this act is. What it really needs to come down to, it needs to go beyond the laws, it needs to be the cultural change, it needs to be the peer pressure from the passenger sitting in the other seat needs to be the person picking up with the phone on the other end saying, I can't talk to you if you're driving the car. It needs to be absolutely everyone stepping up and trying to put an end to this epidemic.